Okay, welcome everybody to uh, our 17th webinar. We are lucky to be joined by Rolando Freitas today, uh, who works with the uh, Israeli national team as the technical director. Um, as usual, there's some housekeeping things. If you can keep your microphone on mute uh, throughout the presentation, that would be great. If you've got some questions, please put them into the chat box. Ricardo and I will be filtering them, and if there's an opportune moment to ask Orlando during the presentation, then uh, we'll interject. Um, we're going to be recording and uploading the webinar to YouTube, so you can access this afterwards. And as we've said before in these webinars, if, it, if there's a, a breach in security, we'll do our best to continue the webinar. But if there's a significant breach, then we might have to abort the, the meeting and maybe uh, yeah, pick it up at another time. So thank you very much for that. I'm going to take this chance to move over to Rolando now, who can give an introduction about himself, and then he can begin uh, sharing his presentation. Thanks. OK, thank you for the, this will stop, so OK. So let me leave. This is good. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, thank you for the invitation, Bobby, uh, Ricardo, and uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. And uh, thank you for all those uh, who have uh, registered uh, themselves in the webinar. And uh, first of all, also to give you congratulations for the uh, amazing uh, job that you are doing with these uh, webinars and uh, everyone is uh, blocked on uh, with you. Okay, so stuck with you. So it's uh, really interesting and it's for me a good opportunity also to be here to to share the, my ideas. So I will try to talk about the fast break, the how to start running or optimal running. Uh, uh, you know that uh, at this moment uh, we can see from the IHF analysis from the World Championship 2019, uh, Germany and Denmark. Uh, Landore, Duenas, Bepler and Spath made this analysis uh, published uh, on the IHF website. And you can see, uh, I don't know if I can move the, the, the my, okay. Okay. Okay, doesn't matter. I can try to make it. You can see on the left graph, that the the number uh, of attacks uh, performed by per match are decreasing since 2011 in uh, 15 percent and uh, if we look at the time that uh, we are uh, playing in attack the average time you see that you came from 29 percent for 35.3 uh, percent but uh, on the other side, on the right side, you can watch that uh, uh, the number of goals scored are almost the same. So 59.2, 58.6. So I believe these uh, small changes, or let's call it big changes, are uh, really important uh, and make, uh, show us the relevance of fast break that uh, has become more and more uh, uh, and the handball is becoming full court at this moment. And uh, as they say, uh, they say that uh, uh, in their analysis that uh, to develop a speed of action it's very important with uh, various methodological training drills. So you can reach one point uh, in different ways. It's not only one, uh, one pathway to go, and you have a lot of options to, to build uh, the players. And uh, the, this ability to quickly turn the defense in attack or from the defense perspective when turning attack into defense plays a crucial role in modern handball. So to, to recover and uh, I want, I want, Sorry, but I needed the, the mouse and I want to, to have this. I'm sorry. Okay. 
Rolando, what um, platform are you using? Is it PowerPoint or Keynote? It's Keynote. Ricardo, didn't we have this problem with um, another presenter? Okay. So I will try to, to, to make it like this, okay? Um, so I, what I think it's important, it's here and it's relevant is first, we need to increase the speed and the speed is still uh, 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 of great relevance in the game. And to the changes of the phases of the game through defense to attack and the attack for, to defense are really important how we make it and how we connect it. So to the practice, to the, to the training, we need also to connect these phases. Uh, we make uh, we are uh, publishing uh, in Israel and uh, I, I believe it also would be uh, in other countries a study about the EHF uh, euro uh, last uh, January and we compare uh, top and bottom teams about uh, uh, some of the parameters that uh, we think it was uh, relevant to to find some good evidence. And if you see, if you can watch these fast break shots, here are 85% uh, and 65% between the six first teams and uh, uh, against the bottom six teams. And uh, uh, statistical, it's significant. So we see that the shots, the, this difference, that it's the, you, the bigger difference uh, between all these parameters, players, teams, and goalkeepers, between the top six and top, uh, the bottom six, uh, it's uh, statistic significant, significance. So I believe that fast breaks uh, importance on match results is becoming huge because we need to take the, we score the same goals, we take these analysis, we score the same goals, we, we have uh, uh, the more time in attack, but uh, uh, so obviously the goals on fast break become more and more important. Okay. Another thing that uh, comes like, uh, I, I, I would like to bring like uh, to the discussion is that the counterattacks are even more fast and even more powerful, it, either individual, either uh, group uh, uh, fast breaks. But uh, as I will show you in some of the videos uh, afterwards, defenders they run as fast as attackers so you need to grant yourself some kind of advantage to start and one of these things you need to move ball as fast as you can so you can influence the speed of the game if you want to play faster or uh, slower and you could put and you can put a pressure a physical pressure because you know that you are better prepared maybe than the other team. Maybe you have better rotation on the rooster than the other team. Uh, also, maybe you can influence the tactical uh, procedures of the other coach about uh, uh, defense, offense, uh, substitutions and the put on pressures, the, uh, the mental uh, about the other team. I, I, I believe yesterday on the Portuguese Congress uh, we spoke a lot about a lot of things and uh, Carlos Martingo was here also talking about uh, seven against six and one of the things that uh, their players, uh, uh, his players know is that they cannot lose the ball seven against six. So it's the same like here that you say that if you lose the ball immediately we will score a goal on fast break on counterattack so this is a lot of pressure also for the other team and of course with all this we want to take advantage of the uh, errors and also to provoke some errors 
about uh, replacements, uh, substitutions, uh, passes, uh, and uh, forced shoots. So when we, we were talking before a couple of years, we were talking about this zone like uh, initiation zone, and this was uh, uh, development zone and this was the scoring zone now i believe this is now it's not for now for today but uh, when when becoming more and more modern the the teams to play this is anticipation zone fast play and velocity here and then we have the organization and scoring but I, I don't believe anymore about this uh, split of zones. I believe that we are coming to a mixed organization that because we can score immediately from the goalkeeper, fast play is uh, for the wings and uh, uh, a lot of speed is putting uh, uh, on, the, on the moving the ball. And basically, the anticipation is for the wings and for the forward on the 5-1 uh, so I, I bring uh, some ideas, some things. It's easy to, mo to go and to run uh, and to make fast break and try to make fast break. The easy to way first is, the, or the difficult way first is to bring them in, on an idea so i will uh, try to bring my idea about how to uh, build up the fast break from uh, uh, youth to the top level and uh, trying to bring some uh, some uh, uh, order on organization of this first we want that the wings you can see on the left graph uh, that uh, left diagram that you can uh, you, you need to put the wings on anticipation and to run as fast as uh, they can. Because uh, what, what we want with this? What is my idea about this? My idea is that uh, the player can move uh, in front of their uh, direct uh, defense or on the other side to bring him and uh, to occupy him and to uh, bring him to his attention. So, in the other side, you can see that the number two defender needs to be open and run as, as fast as he can to closer to the half line uh, of the court. On this position that is receiving the ball on diagram uh, on the left, you can see that uh, he can watch all the, uh, the court. He can see on his left the wing, he can see deep to the six meters line, and he can have the long pass uh, on the cross side if he needs. So first, first drills coming like uh, diagram two and diagram three next is uh, to try to give in the first uh, pass to the wing to score immediately or to return it with diagram three to the back to, to finish. So this is simple running and uh, used about timings and about moments and about uh, ideas about what they want, what we want that they can do. On the next two diagrams, it's already something that I uh, bring before and you can, uh, you can add a defender and with this situation, you can add uh, a decision making about uh, the what wing or back player uh, needs to do uh, with this situation you uh, wing needs to decide if he has the space enough to go directly to the goal or if he needs to come uh, to the back player to score after he moved to himself the the defender and add an extra pass to come back the ball to the wing if he needs. On the, uh, the right uh, diagram, uh, we are using maybe first without uh, defenders and after with defenders because the closer, the short passes are easy to make. 
the problem is the longest passes and the cross passes that we can make it for the other side of the of the court and with this we can work with the back players and opposite wing and give a long pass to explore the running on the other side of the ball so also here we, we if we had a, a player a defender also you can uh, introduce the uh, situation about the, the decision making so i try to to bring some of the and you see first the anticipation of the player in this situation here the same on the other side okay and here okay you can see first uh, three four defenders try to recover so defenders ran as best as good as the as the op, uh, op, uh, attackers like this you have four against four and you see that one of the players came to uh, make substitution uh, instead of uh, returning back to the defense and this make us bring us and like here that we are in very good advantage with the two wings running and one of the central defenders uh, running in the middle offering uh, another option to give ball the same here okay a pass without uh, even looking because they know that they are running and also the same here you see the advance of the players in this line okay uh, sometimes they are not staggered enough but uh, they take the advantage and as you see it's situation clear of one against zero uh, Matt is not here because he won't like that I would say one against zero but one against the goalkeeper but uh, without uh, defenders or opponents here we have the almost the same situation but you can see I let it run okay I will come here you see all the wing is running and always ready to receive the ball in uh, clear advantage to his direct opponent and how he takes the advantage okay to go directly to the goal this is the easiest goal that you can score you can recover the ball and you can give a long pass to the wing and uh, score it immediately the same here you see the stagger okay and the wing is coming directly in good advantage for to record the goal here okay we can see that if i can go a little bit behind you see the recover of the ball you see the anticipation of the wing on here okay i don't, i believe you can see my mouse right yes rolando yeah okay and you can receive the ball and then there's a situation i will show this video again there's a clear situation of two against one against this player okay to have a clear shot from the wing and you see both wings on the sides and also the lanes the central lanes are okay sorry okay are occupied to receive and to score the ball so situations like uh, two against one uh, need players need to run as uh, fast as they can on the wings and uh, three against two like we are going to see next is uh, very common so we need to 
work on this and to try to have good decisions about uh, uh, what players need to run. So if you go to the side three against two, the, on the left side, you can see connect the phases of the game. So what I want to make here is a simple cross or a simple pass with a shooting and then get a free on the right side, a free against two, with the same principles that we ran before. Wing ran as fast as he can to, uh, to his corner to receive direct pass. And we have a back player that runs on the central lane so he can decide about the pass for the wing or the, for the center. Okay? And this is the situation. If we have like wide and open situation, or if we have a situ another one, when you, you run with the pivot and pivot comes inside and you have a situation that's three against two, with a, a, a line player inside and back and wing against. So these, these are very common when you try to use it and to bring this to the, to the court and the, to the match. And you can see, you see also that when, when the back player makes this pass to the wing, he pushes all the team on this side. It's like pressuring the team on this side and opening the other side uh, solutions. And this, you can see here, if he will score this goal, I, I, I can predict that he can score this goal, but also on the right side, it was a time and space advantage. Okay? So on this, he can continue, Okay, he score, it's good. But you see, like the drill that we make before, the two against one, I want to emphasize this. Okay. And here is the pass from the wing and the returning pass for the back player. So he can solve, he could play with the pivot or he can continue like he, that, he did. So this is the same situation that I, I told you that uh, I, I would bring this back. Number 29 is a line player. He could move inside if this player continues to run. But how, we, how I believe he understands that the right back he was oriented to to the line player, he opens, he tries to clear the situation and not to bring trouble noise to the situation. But it was also, or could be, a clear situation of three against two and two open space on this. Think two more situations and you see ball on the other side and we try to stagger, we have Pass over the ear, pass over here. The wings are open, okay? And coming like a situation of three against two or immediately if he runs or a situation that comes from three against two to two against one. Similar with, with the pivot. And kind of similar also, recovering, no uh, side pivot running inside, okay? But the decision is to play two against one on the, on the side. At the same time, I would like to make, uh, to show you also to connect the faces and play four against three. So two back players uh, and two wings or one line player, one back player and two wings. First of all, anticipation to these circles that I, I emphasize here on the diagram and play normal, play a simple cross, give ball to the other back and shoot. No more than two free passes to, we are not, uh, we are not focused on the attack, on offense, we are focused on the, what they, it will be after. So with this, the players will 
try to run after and the same situations that we have like three against two on one side or two against one or on the other side creating situations for two against one on the opposite side so idea is to always to pressure one side and to have a open space for the other side this is the main idea and you could make it also with a uh, line player as i mentioned before okay one step uh, behind about this ball comes in the wing wing can give ball to back player that must be offensive to the goal and he can decide to shoot or to give ball to a two against one on the other side this is frill drill i'm sorry drill shooting for easy okay open give ball wing doesn't open too much they are too much close okay they are uh, 17 18 years old this is uh, and but they could score okay they could find a solution again what i want to to emphasize is this you see this player doesn't run is looking too much he needs to run uh, i believe much more to bring the player even so he don't get pressured by the defense so he can receive the ball and now it's a clear situation where two against two this side and he can get an option to the other side and play it easy so handball is very simple you just need to watch it and play it accordingly we can play also uh, we can make this kind of same drills with the foreign against free on lateral zone so this was what was before also explained a simple uh, change uh, of the ball uh, call it uh, in portuguese nova and uh, and uh, we shoot and we run back and on this situation we have all now we had another player another defender and we have the line player and we have the central back in, in the middle on this you can watch it that is if i take this diagram for the first one that i show is the only these arrows is are the same are the same because it's two against one on the corner and then try to get an advantage on the middle of the court so i want I want to score on the corner. Yes, I want to score on the corner if I can immediately because it's three seconds, not every, not more. But I want also to pressure on the corner so I can open the space in the middle. Okay, deep or wide. You see that the back players that are here. They are not used or they were not used at that time they were young players and you see the four against three corner is completely open here okay defenders are stuck on three against three they uh, leave, uh, leave central back open but no one touched anyone and he could score easily same doesn't matter how he starts okay I don't like it this okay I, I will show you I'm sorry what I don't like is this okay because you cannot see uh, in to the front you can have to watch I prefer that ball can be on the back player if he can take advantage you look at these two players if the ball comes here on the back player immediately can uh, take an advantage two against one on this side so but the ball comes here I give the ball and make nice thing to shoot nice movement to shoot this is you see that playmaker he can push a little more after also right back and give ball and he can break through because 
they are not very uh, correctly uh, placed on the court. Two players and three players this side. So this team on white has good advantage and you can give the ball to the wing or you can give the ball. So then it's decision making about the player that takes the ball and can score or not. It's the same here, okay? The playmaker takes the ball, he can shoot with one more step or two, but it's completely open and also good decision from the right back to give ball inside. And this, you see that there comes a situation of three against three on this side, but it's completely clear that the situation on the other side is the two against one or even a three against two, two players here. So good movement, good ball, also line player clear a little the space for the, the back and, and he can score. He can score uh, from the wing. On the opposite, it's a kind of similar situation also. You can ball coming from pressure from one side. You have three players on this, okay? And you give ball and this is the mistake. You make a dribble in uh, no dribble zone instead of giving the ball to the wing that it was open. It was, uh, okay. Another uh, option is, uh, there's, look, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, possibilities to work. This is only an idea to build it. But uh, to come in with substitutions and Free against free clear. And you see this player with a change, like a substitution here. And this player ran to the side. And the defense, the expert on defense comes inside. But first they have advantage already. And even he can score directly. So, you see, the offense attacker will go out. They try to take advantage and direct pass here to try to shoot. So, idea is also about, and now I think in modern ball is about uh, taking advantage of the time, of the, the timing that you can... There will be also uh, substitutions two substitutions, three substitutions, one substitution, uh, offense, defense. But uh, the main thing is to try to put the ball, to move the ball on the other court as fast as you can. So you can, don't uh, let, allow the other team to get ready to receive the ball. And another uh, drill that uh, to complete, to go to another phase is to play six against five. With you can work with one move first. You see, this player will not run back. Okay, we can decide who, who is the player who is not running back, and there's a huge mistake here because I don't believe he can watch what is going in front of him. But even there, moving the ball, he can reach a situation of three against two on the side. So this is, I, in, in the end of, the, of this talk, I would like also to bring some, some uh, videos from the last uh, uh, men's uh, EHF uh, Euro uh, 2020. So uh, this is the two and two, two against one actions. So easy, running with the wing, 
also here with moving he was fighting with the player with the opponent and great move from the german player to get an advantage on two against one on the side also recovering the ball and two against one on one side. So these are common situations on the top level. And here what Doshpayev used to make it is so common dribble before make this uh, support pass. Or again, also the three against two. On the other side, you see, giving the ball on the other, on the opposite side, right back, have two options or three options. He can shoot, he can break through, he can give ball to one of these teammates. One situation apparently of wide three against two, because Duvniak uh, could bring more here or the ball but so a lot of quality to go one against one and to move the ball to bring the ball inside and here what we talked before also the returning pass so the back player can easily shoot with a long run with no opposition and a clear free against two situation on the this side. I believe two or two different situations here. Also playing with wing, wing open, and playing with line player. And starting with a cross shot. And I believe that we have watched something similar before. Bringing pressure from one side to the other side for a three against two situation. Uh, two more uh, clips about the long cross pass matches, actions. And uh, this is it. So you can see you recover the ball. Uh, Duvniak is more on the center, but it's a long pass on the opposite side for the wing that has anticipation and and okay here to show you also that ball not a long pass but ball needs to here the same but ball needs to show here okay he has the pass here he almost uh, did it but then. He takes the ball and for, go for a dribble one against one. I believe uh, last uh, last clip is um, back when you have uh, good players also and uh, talent ones. Uh, I I believe that also you can rely on the, these players and. Uh, one of the things I, I watch in Scandinavian uh, countries, mainly in Denmark also, uh, that they are taking the dribble, okay? They are dribbling almost all court. And this was something that uh, it was uh, in some national teams and some teams when there's uh, a top, top level player that can handle uh, great the ball. And so this, what I try to show you here, Dribbles and takes the ball and goes one against three. And here the same from goal to goal. Okay. What brings us different options, okay, to, uh, to find uh, uh, solutions to score. So this is it. I left you with the uh, uh, link for the videos if you have uh, some uh, uh, problems or some issues with this and uh, i believe now i can if you have any 
question or something to discuss, I will be free for this. Uh, for your thank you, Juan. We've um, we've already said on the chat that, um, that we would send the, the links to everyone um, in terms of being able to assist at home. So an email will follow. Uh, in terms of the of some of the questions, I think the the there's a couple. Uh, and you've been obviously had experience in uh, uh, and have uh, big success with age groups uh, in Portugal with the under 21s national team and um, and the under the under 19s national team. Uh, and there's some questions around you on your weekly, well not not weekly, but on your uh, camps planning around fast break. What's the emphasis in terms of when you're planning for a, a camp with a team or a national team that Obviously, it's very specific because, because you meet for a week or, or two weeks prior to a competition. Uh, what kind of emphasis in percentage do you attribute to fast break work in your session? So, how much comparing to everything else? Okay, it's a very good question because I believe that uh, uh, we we could bring also a graph uh, from uh, sideline sports and it could bring you uh, an example of this. But uh, what I can uh, tell you about, uh, I, I will stop to share or? Uh... Okay. So um, what I want to, what I want to, uh, to tell you is that uh, I would, I, to be honest, I would like to make it uh, to to watch it. What is uh, said, what is written in the graphs on the graphs, but uh, I believe it's uh, around thirty percent uh, or more, forty percent. Uh, usually, we when we came uh, on with these national teams to the camps, we make uh, skills and individual practice on the first day or first practice of the day. And then we have like a, a defense, offense, fast break uh, practice. So defense uh, morning, uh, then you connect with the fast break and then you go to offense. And this, uh, if we don't have matches, this will come uh, like a routine. So you have two or three practice that you are connecting with fast break. But at the same time, even if some, uh, sometimes the focus is uh, on uh, offense or defense, we are trying to connect phases. So we, we never forget uh, to work on the, the principles and the basis of the fast break. Thanks, Rolando. Ricardo, anything else? Yeah, we had uh, questions uh, around the, the goalkeeper uh, specific work uh, on fast break transitions and how do you what practical uh, situations do you build in your sessions to allow them to make better decisions when they are? Because obviously, most of the cases, the goalkeepers are the first ones to decide where the ball goes to, if it goes to the wing directly, if it goes to the, to the second wave or to another player who, who might be uh, alone. Um, what kind of emphasis do you give to the goalkeeper decision making in, in your work and how do you, do, how do you promote that? Uh, they have to, I believe that uh, I always gave uh, to the goalkeepers the trust to, to take the decision to uh, a long uh, pass to the wings because this is what we want first or uh, to a line player or to a forward player. So if they can bring it immediately, it's three seconds, so give it. And uh, sometimes uh, they make a mistake. Uh, about this, but you you need to have the feeling about uh, uh, if it was uh, an ego uh, mistake or if it was a tactical mistake uh, about uh, analyzing of the decision. I believe um, I, what I think uh, if we go to a drill that you want to to carry the ball to the next uh, uh, court or to take a decision three against two or four against two, you, t you, s you tell the goalkeeper to give the ball to one of the back players. 
and uh, and in in terms of strategy also you can give for the game to give the ball here and there but uh, i always allow the goalkeepers to give a first pass or a direct shot for the goal thanks Fernando. Uh, ricardo shall i jump in with a question thank you yes yes well yeah. Um, right, a question from from me. So um, you presented a, a practice where it was three against four, um, and the four defenders would then transition to a counter attack after uh, maybe a cross or something like that, uh, and then a shot from the the three players. My question is: in situations like that, in in exercises like that, how can you give the defenders the the notion not to not to forget their defensive responsibility because obviously we want them to recognise the moment to to run, but we don't want them to cheat. So how can you give the defenders that um, decision making aspect of when is the right time to uh, make my movement or rather than going too soon? Okay, good question. Sometimes yes, if we are completely focused on the running, and this running is the most important thing. Uh, we allow uh, that they will run even if it's not the right timing. Uh, on the other side, uh, often uh, we can say if it's goal, if it's goal, you stay, you don't run. And, uh, or you can run after you save uh, two balls. Or they, so you control yourself like this uh, on the opposite side. And uh, also competition because we try to make uh, some ideas about uh, who is winning the four or the three players uh, about uh, shooting on the goals. So this is one of the ideas that we are bringing to trying to make some competition in the, in the practice. So three against four, if they score, it's one goal or if it's two goals and if they run, then they need to score. And this put a lot of pressure also to, make, to, the, to try to make uh, the things good. Brilliant. Thanks, Fernando. Ricardo? Yeah, just there's another one in private now. Um, in terms of the, the influence of the 7v6 in the transitions in the fast breaks, uh, and it's obviously a personal opinion question, how do you think or do you think the 7v6 will impact directly on the amount of uh, first wave fast breaks that, that, that we have currently? Obviously, the goal-to-goal -goal shooting, as you mentioned, it's something that uh, has increased because of that. Uh, which is obvious, there's no goalkeeper in the goal, so we're going to try and, and push for all the goalkeepers to target that. But in terms of uh, in terms of the overall speed of the game, obviously including the fast break, how do you think the 76 might impact on it? Uh, I don't know if uh, the... I need a, a deeper study about this. I don't know if it is the, the 7 against 6 that is... Uh, increasing the the time of the each attack the average time of each attack and uh, and the, in the, the number of goals uh, are rich because of the goals I, and i i'm not sure also if the goals from the goalkeeper are, are counting as the fast breaks in, uh, immediately for the statistics i mean and uh, so what I want to, to share with you about this uh, question is that uh, I believe seven against six can at uh, some point uh, uh, slow down the, uh, the attack, but at the same time, every team wants to make a fast break uh, and to run as fast as they can. So it, it will be a balance, I, I believe. It will be a balance between the, the two situations. And the... Uh, if, uh, as I show you, uh, in the, I believe that I, can, I could show it, uh, what I want to uh, tell you is that if you, you have like a, a pressure from one side and you have seven against six, even you can make it over there on the, on the situation because the players want to, to take advantage of the position and of the substitution. This is why I started to introduce also on this, uh, the substitutions on the drills so you need to move you need to move one of the drills that I used to make and uh, it's uh, to play the two teams on the warm-up game uh, six against six or seven against six eight against eight and no doesn't matter who is the goalkeeper on the goal 
but you can only shoot with the two hands to the goal. But if you score, you need to go to the other uh, goal and to become goalkeeper. And with this situation, the other team needs to run and to move the ball as fast as they can so they can score. If, uh, meanwhile, there's no goalkeeper on the goal. So this is also a mental thing, I believe. Uh, and all, every time I, I have learned that uh, fast break, running, counterattacks is a mental thing. A mental for the team that leads and to the other team. And still is. Still is. And uh, even teams with, uh, you, you see, uh, Croatia has no, no bigger rotation. Not a big uh, rotation on the roster, but they still run. Okay, maybe they, they arrive to the eighth game or the seventh game or ninth game of the event and they are completely exhausted. But uh, they run. They run on two against one or three against two situations. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Bobby, anything else from, from your side? Uh, no, that, I think that's everything. I think There's that... one uh, who just popped up. Yeah. Um, so what, what uh, João is asking, obviously, if you're asking your wings to take anticipatory movements and to, to go earlier, um, if this will not allow more rebounds for the opposite for the opposing uh, team. Uh, okay, I understand. This is uh, coming with the competences of uh, of uh, the responsibilities that we give to the players. If we take the the rebound with the player number two on defense, or if uh, only on the other side can make a big anticipation of the other side of the goal. So mm -hmm. this comes with the responsibility and. Uh, but what I want to, to emphasize is the main idea to start to run and to get anticipated. You cannot reach this. Uh, we have, like in Portugal, uh, 14 years ago, one of the wings scored 16 goals against the Portuguese national team. 16 goals. And uh, where was the, our wing? You understand what is the responsibility of our wing to uh, run back. On the second game, uh, he, de he didn't score uh, score one or two goals, I believe. I don't uh, quite remember exactly. But uh, the main job of the, that uh, wing, our wing, was to take care of uh, uh, this uh, right wing. So what I want to say is, this is like, it was like a strategy for this match. And sometimes you, you cannot anticipate so much because of the dangers of the other team and uh, to need to fight. And, uh, but you, you have, I believe, you have to take the risk and try to get the, some anticipation because uh, to score in three seconds is so great. Yeah, it's all about easy goals and risk and reward. Uh, yeah, that's perfect. There's no more questions as far as I can see. Uh, I would leave you, Bobby, to, to close. And I would, uh, on, on, on my behalf personally, I would like to thank you, Rolanda, for, for this moment. It's always a pleasure to, oh, share, my pleasure to share your knowledge and experience. So, Bobby, yeah, I'll leave thanks. it there. Thanks, Ricardo. And Rolando, thanks so much for taking the time to be with us this afternoon. I know that you've been uh, Hello. busy on the... Uh, do we have another question? Uh, I don't know. Someone is... <laughs> Ravinder? Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Do you want to... Hello. Yeah. I'm audible, sir. We can hear you. Sir, um, I have one question. Okay. That... Oh, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, I have a question that... What... Like speed, strength, endurance, which motor component? Speed, endurance, speed, strength, which motor component is used? Uh, Maximum use in, in handball. Ravinder. Can you can you write your question just because it's uh, it's there's cuts on your call and we can't understand it? Can you write it, please? Yes, sir. I write. Thank you. Just while we're waiting for the, the question to come in, uh, Rolando, I know you've been really busy on uh, many many webinars the, the the past few weeks. So to take the time out to speak with us at England Handball and share your uh, vast experience and knowledge has has been great and. 
I'm sure everyone on the call's taken a lot from this. You know, very, very, um, a very detailed and evidence-based uh, practice, um, which is, is all we can ask for, really. So, um, yeah, from, from England Handball, thank you very much for taking the time. Um, just while we're waiting for Ravindel, I'm going to tell you guys who we've got up next week. So we've got uh, just one second. We've got Daniel uh, Gordo Rios, the former Brazilian national team coach, who's going to be presenting on uh, offensive strategies after a foul. So um, it'll be the same time uh, next Friday. So we hope you guys can join us. And just while we're uh, finishing that off, Ravinder's put his question in. So it's around the motor components like speed, strength, endurance, flexibility, coordination, ability using handball. Um, so which motor components are used? Well, I think, uh, well, I've got my opinions on this, but uh, it's, it's, it's a multifaceted game, Ravinder. As you've mentioned, there's many components of, of fitness that are used in, in, in handball. Um, and the motor components around speed and strength endurance, it's, it's, it's in every uh, position and most actions of the game. So um, I don't know if there's a specific uh, angle you're looking for here about which is more important or which, which should we spend our time working on. But I think um, most people would agree handball covers a vast majority of, uh, of these components and it would be um, remiss to spend our time focusing on one thing. Rolando, mm -hmm. Ricardo, anything from you? Hello. Uh, I, I'd like to say thank you for uh, the invitation and uh, also for the, those who have resisted uh, themselves to watch it, this webinar and uh, continue to with the great job that you are doing. We need a uh, UK uh, handball strong as you can imagine. So keep on with the good Obrigado. work. Obrigado. Um, Obrigado. <laughs> thank Obrigado. you guys. I'll see you next Friday. We'll see you next Friday, yeah? Thanks, guys. Next Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um abraço. Um abraço, Rolando. Obrigado. Thank you. Thank you. Um abraço, Ricardo. Thank you.